please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we have uh, the next thing is the recognition of an Eagle Scout from our community. I don't see them here yet. So if they come in late, otherwise we'll have to try to reschedule. I apologize. Right. No, that's fine. And uh, moving on to Part B, the financial report. Got something for us, Todd? I do. <laughs> September, uh, in the education fund, we have receipts of $1,052,020.16. Expenses of $1,056,462.85. Cash balance at the end of September in the education fund is $658,490.59. Debt service fund, we had receipts of $5,891.39. There were no expenses in September in the debt service fund. Cash balance in the debt service fund at the end of September is $1,233,983.63. And the operations fund, we had receipts of $77,440.77. We had expenses of $347,479.30. Our cash balance in the operations fund at the end of September is $695,764.35. Okay. Um, can you do this consent? Am I doing it wrong? Is this supposed to be consent or are these all uh, individual? I think you can do them all as a consent. Okay. Together. Okay. Um, then let's move on. 2023 budget adoption. That might be. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Let's just uh, go. Um, let's go ahead and do. If anyone have any questions over the funds report, I just had one. Todd, are we still waiting on some more reimbursements to come in from either ESSER funds or do we get the FEMA and? We, we received FEMA at the beginning of the year. Okay. Um, ESSER, of course, is a continual thing. I'll wait until the end of the year to ask for um, reimbursements for substitutes, et cetera, in the so, education fund. Okay, so do you anticipate that there will be, because both of those were down year over year. Yes. And so, I mean, I know we've had some raises in between there, but to have both of them substantially down year over year was interesting. So. We will get reimbursed for some of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? Questions from the community? If not, I will entertain a motion that we approve the funds report as read. So moved. Thank you. Joe and Jenny. And because we have uh, Kyle on Zoom, we need to do a roll call vote. So we'll just start with um, Joe. Joe. Jenny? Okay. Yes. Kyle? Yes. Kyle R? Yes. And I agree, yes as well. So the motion pack carries five to zero. Moving on to the budget. 2023 budget adoption. Anything you want to say? Not that we haven't already discussed and hasn't been presented. Okay. Jenny, anything? Not the, no. Well, I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the race part of it, but I believe that we're confident where we are with that. Okay. Any questions about the current, uh, the budget for the 2023 school year? Any questions or comments from the community? At this time, I will entertain a motion that we adopt the 2023 budget as presented. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Joe. And again, we need to roll call, so we'll just start here. Kyle? Yes. Kyle? Yes. 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 
Jenny Doe, I mean for the record. And I also vote yes, so motion carries five to zero. Moving on, 2023 Capital Projects Fund Plan Resolution. We talked about this at our study session. Is there anything that needs to be updated or added to? Okay. Not this time. All right. Would you like me to read the resolution or there's not a lot to it? But I'm well, willing to do that. What? I said if there's not a lot to it, but I'm willing to, to do that. Um, is it the, the top, the heading on this page? No, I, I have the resolution of the DLGF. Sure. This resolution is adopted by the Board of Trustees of the School Corporation below, which is Rochester New School Corporation in Polk County. Whereas a capital projects plan has been established, and whereas the Board of Trustees is required under Indiana Code 20-40-18-6 to adopt a plan for the capital projects plan, and whereas the Board of Trustees held a public hearing on the plan date in place below October 4th, 2022, at this location. Therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan entitled 2023 Capital Project Plan, this resolution and is adopted as the Board of Trustees plan with respect to the Capital Projects Plan. Okay. Be it further resolved, sorry, that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution to the Department of Local Government Finance as required by Indiana Code 20-40-18-6. Okay, we'll try to do all that. All right. <laughs> Any questions from the board? Any questions from the community? Again, we will do a roll call vote. It's easy for me to start here. Kyle McLaughlin. Yes. Kyle Rensberg. Yes. Jenny. Yes. yes. Joe. Thank you. And uh, I also vote yes, so that resolution uh, passes five to zero. Item four, bus replacement <coughs> resolution. Is that another one of those long things you get to read? Of course. <laughs> this resolution is adopted by the Board of Trustees of the School Corporation below, Rochester Community School Corporation, Old County. Whereas a school bus replacement plan has been established, and whereas the Board of Trustees is required under Indiana Code 20-40-18-9 to adopt a plan for the school bus replacement plan. And whereas the Board of Trustees held a public hearing on the plan date in place below, October 4th, 2022, at this location. Therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees that the plan entitled Bus Replacement Plan, this resolution, and is adopted as the Board of Trustees plan with respect to the school bus replacement plan. Be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall submit a certified copy of this resolution to the Department of Local Government Finance as required by Indiana Code 20-40-18-9. Thank you. Questions from the board? Any questions or comments from the community? And again, um, if I could have a motion, we will move forward on that. So moved. That we, I move that we accept the bus replacement plan resolution as read. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Joe. Kyle McLaughlin? Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. I also vote yes. The resolution passes five to zero. Oh, we got it. all these resolutions. Okay, mm -hmm. adopt preliminary bond resolution. Is that another, How is that one a big long one or we've all read it five times already? Is that it? Because uh, it wasn't um, attached, that's why. What? I said put your slippers on and lean back. Oh. <laughs> Bobby, I think we only have to read from uh, be it resolved and down. You don't have to read the whereas clauses. Well, that cuts it in half. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on, be it resolved or be it further resolved? Be it resolved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Be it resolved by the Board of trustees that for the purpose of obtaining funds to be applied on the cost of projects there shall be issued and sold the bonds of the school corporation to be designated as general obligation bonds of 2022 the bonds shall be in a principal amount not to exceed eight hundred forty five thousand dollars bearing interest at a rate or rates not exceeding five percent per annum 
the exact rate or rates to be determined by bidding. Which interest shall be payable on January 15th and July 15th and each year beginning no earlier than July 15th, 2023. The bonds shall be fully registered in the denomination of $5,000 or integral multiples thereof or any or other denominations as requested by the winning bidder and shall mature serially or be subject to mandatory redemption on January 15th and July 15th beginning no earlier than July 15th, 2023 through no later than January 15th, 2025. The bonds shall be redeemable on the dates and in the amounts as determined by the issuer. Be it further resolved by the board of the issuer that the matter of appropriating the proceeds of the bonds authorized at this meeting be taken up for consideration as soon as notice of the hearing on the appropriation can be given as provided by law and that the secretary of the board be and hereby is directed to give notice of the public hearing to be held prior to the final action on such appropriation which notice shall be published in the rochester sentinel at least 10 days prior to the date set for such public hearing be it further resolved that the secretary of the board be and hereby is directed to give notice of the determination to issue the bonds which notice shall be published twice one week apart in the rochester sentinel also that the notice of determination shall be posted in three public places in the school corporation thank you any questions on the bond any questions from the community i would entertain a motion that we adopt the preliminary bond resolution so moved Thank you, Kyle. Second. Thank you, Jenny. Um, again, yes. we'll do a roll call. Kyle McLaughlin? Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? And I also vote yes. Mm -hmm. And then that resolution passes five to zero. Next, number item seven is the approval of claims totaling $926,219 and one penny. Katie, you've got to go back to number six. You skipped six. I skipped six. I didn't mean to. I'd be sick of me reading two. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my numbers down on the wrong one. Uh, I'm so sorry. Adopt reimbursement resolution. This one's like three sentences. Good. <laughs> Now, therefore, be it resolved that the school corporation declares its official intent to fund the projects with proceeds of obligations incurred by the school corporation in a principal amount not to exceed $845,000. Be it further resolved that the school corporation reasonably expects to reimburse itself from proceeds of obligations issued by the school corporation for cost of the projects paid prior to the issuance of bonds. Thank you. Any questions? Basically, we said we're going to sell the bonds and now we're going to spend the money, right? Is that what that means? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Just checking. Any questions from the board? Questions or concerns from the community? I would entertain a motion that we adopt uh, the reimbursement resolution. So moved. Thank you, Kyle. Second. I didn't even have to erase it from last time. All right. <laughs> and uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and vote. Kyle McLaughlin. Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie? Yes. The motion carries five to zero. Now we'll move on to item seven, approval of claims totaling still $926,219.01. Anything for us, Todd? No. Just the usual claims, and we did have that on. Any question about the claims? Any questions from the community? Makes for great reading on a windy, nasty uh, Monday morning. Okay. Um, if not, we'll go ahead and uh, I would uh, accept a motion for approval of the claims. So moved. Thank you, Joe. No second. Thank you, Jenny. And Kyle, Rens or Kyle McLaughlin wants to vote. Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. I vote yes. Claims are approved five to zero. Approval of the payrolls totaling $975,205.96. Payroll was also included in our, in our board packet. So uh, if any of you have any questions about payroll, let me know. Anybody in the community? Alrighty then, I'll accept a motion to approve payrolls. So moved. Thank you, Kyle. One second. 
and Jenny. And Kyle McLaughlin? Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes. Five to zero. Motion carries. Moving on to consent items. Approval of the minutes from the September 19, 2022 regular meeting. Approval of the minutes from the October 4th, 2022 regular meeting, public meeting. And the approval of the minutes from the October 4th, 2022 study session. That's it. Do any of you have any questions about any of our minutes? I did notice a spelling error. Well, I'll have to go back and find that. And, and uh, I will send Amber a message. How about that? Would that be okay with you, Kathy? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, I would accept the motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. So I'll go with Kyle this time. Okay. Um, and again, Kyle McLaughlin? Yes. Kyle yes. Rensberger? Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie, yes, motion carries five to zero. Action items. Number one, <clears throat> approval to deem the corporation airplane as surplus. After seeing photos of the corporation airplus, <laughs> I have no question that this is the right thing to do. <laughs> so probably about six or seven years ago, we had donated to us a 1969 Piper Cherokee it, uh, the wings had been taken off. It had been stripped uh, down. It was the intent was to use it for electrical engineering classes, that type of thing. And I believe we ran one or two courses through there. But since then, more of it is being done in house and with modules here. And rather than pay a hundred dollars a month rent to continue to keep that out of the airport, I would recommend to the board that we deem that as surplus and scrap it. Um, working with the gentleman out at the airport i don't know that there's anything of value to try to pull off of the plane and, and resell it's just better that we scrap it i have no questions about that does <laughs> anyone else anyone from the community i'm telling you that you might you probably find a raccoon or a couple of mice yeah. in there from what yeah. i could see um i would entertain a motion then that we approve the scrap of the or the surplus designating the airplane surplus. So moved. Jim. Second. Thank you, Joe. Okay. And uh, how do you vote? Kyle McLaughlin? Yes. Kyle Rensberger? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes as well, five to zero. Motion carries. Approval of the increase to the pipeline. So we shared with you at the study session um, the numbers, the proposals for uh, the job description and pipelines. Um, the new increases would be completely there over to the right in the column. Um, I think that Scott can pull that up. It allows the principals the opportunity to work with those within each of those departments for um, evaluations, years of service, uh, those, those types of things. Um, Brenda's gone through and she has uh, worked on all of those numbers Todd and I have met um, just want the board to be very much aware that we are looking at all uh, financial resources avenues we have some outstanding puzzle pieces that we don't know yet part of that is the spring financial formula the other part of it is talk as to whether or not they're going to um, reimburse us for preschool I met with a couple of superintendents and it seems like the federal government is still on track to honor those that have preschools, those types of things. So we have run all of those numbers. On the very last page there, Scott, um, we have done complete increases to all of the increases to the corporation and have them broken down there um, by the numbers that we have over the next uh, fiscal year. Any questions from work? I talked, I just want to be completely honest, I talked with the administrative team today. We know that we're watching every penny, every dime. Um, there are some things that we are incurring that we weren't expecting. A lot of it has to do with inflation and those operational costs, just as everybody's seen. 
Um, Todd ran numbers for us, so we still have a little over $2 million left there that we can designate for expenses and, and those is appropriate through ESSER. But um, this is something that no school system, I think, anticipated the inflation where it is, especially in the operations fund um, and with educational fund to keep the IAs here to, to do what we needed to do to honor teachers. Um, we're competing with uh, even right now Kroger's and uh, food, fast food service and education is so so much more important in my mind and to be able to keep those good people here we're going to have to continue to keep up with them and watch every dime that we spend okay any so, questions from the board so the numbers here just reiterating this is strictly from pipeline raises Correct. so any other departmental raises um, administrative raises well. that's separate Correct. Okay. Correct, and I have those numbers too. Good question, yes. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the community? I just got a quick question about, um, we have daycare assistants listed on there, but we don't have a daycare director listed, so I, I don't know if that's an oversight or if there's an Yeah, well, part of that, Jason, is for, for the raise, to, this is another good point that you bring up. For people to receive raises, they need to have been with the district for a year. So once that program has been with us for a year, we would look at adding that to the pipeline with the incremental. I just resources. all have questions because none of our daycare assistants have been here for a year either. I'm just right. wondering why sure. one's on and one's not. So I just need to be able to yep. answer that. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? If not, I'll entertain a motion to increase uh, to approve the increases to the pipeline. So moved. Kyle. I'll second. Jenny. Kyle McLaughlin, how do you vote? Yes. Kyle Redsburg? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie votes yes. Five to zero. The motion carries. Approval of non certified employee contracts. So, Jenny uh, was just asking about that, and I can break this down a bit further. So with the administrator contracts, so those who are directors, um, principals, assistant principals, um, we went through using the formula that the board um, approved and we went off last year, takes the highest uh, teacher salary off that highest rung of the ladder, um, gives us a per day amount. We multiply that by um, the days that the contract is for we add in the evaluation rating and the experience rating. When we go through all of that, the um, increase to the educational fund would be $35,263. The increase to the operational fund would be $22,016. That takes my contract and everything out. Uh, any proposals there would run at $22,000 for a total um, of right at 57500 To the education? Fund? No, education oh, is 35000 okay. Education is 35263 Operation minus my contract would be an increase of 22016 Do we do yours then when we, how would we include Janet on that? Well, we have, a, we, a have to, we have to do a public hearing and um, have that advertisement. That public hearing is the 24th at 5:30. Yeah, I remember that. And then we, uh, then at the next board meeting in November, we will uh, decide to approve or not approve. Jen, I guess I wasn't thinking that the formula that we developed last year. I I thought that was for certified staff only. Correct. Okay. For the principals and right, directors. right. Yes. Okay. So yes. So that then what formula were you using for? So we went through and we did uh, a couple of comparatives. So we tried to compare with districts our size, districts within um, our area, our region. We tried to at least do a three percent uh, increase across the board. Where we got hung up is with our maintenance department and knowing that we have had a great deal of turnover and inconsistency in the maintenance department striving to become uh, work towards preventative maintenance rather than reactive and calling contractors in. Um, I went out specifically um, with some board suggestions, some community suggestions, reached out to some uh, individuals directly, 
and um, invited them into the district. The two gentlemen that I'm recommending tonight are not ones that immediately accepted the position. They are ones that came in and I felt like at times I was being interviewed, which is a good thing. They walked through the district. They um, understand where we are. They understand not only our desire for preventative maintenance, but also consistency and longevity within the district, which we have not seen for quite some time. But they also embraced what I shared with them and that I want um, the zebra herd. I want them to be able to work with each department to be able to understand that we are all one unit no matter what building we're in what department we're in and i just uh last night had another conversation with a gentleman that will bring his name to you here in a bit but i'm confident that he embraces all of that to help lead us moving forward thank you for that principles aren't in here though correct principles are in the numbers i just read right. so the are we approving those too that would be part of the increase Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yep. Any questions from anyone else uh, re regarding approval of the non-certified employee contracts? Anything from the community? I would entertain a motion at this time to approve the uh, non-certified employee contracts. So moved. Do I hear a second? A second. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> All right, and the vote, Kyle? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie? Yes. And the motion carries five to zero. Uh, approval of the request for an <clears throat> exception to the Wednesday rule for RMS Spell Bowl competition. I'll turn this over to Ms. Murphy to share um, the hurdles that they're going through for the Spell Bowl competition and getting that on our calendar. Things have just changed. Miss um, Runkle is our um, sponsor for Spell Bowl, so I kind of included what she said in, in my suggestion as well. Um, it used to take place at Tippy Valley on Tuesday, and now it's changed to Elkhart Christian Academy, and they are doing that on Wednesday. We don't have control over when they choose to hold the event, and we'd like our kids to be able to participate, so we're just asking for an exception to that rule. I don't have a problem with that. Spellbull's a good thing, and they have a good time, and they learn something in the process, so all's well. Um, any questions from the board? Any comments from the community? I would entertain a motion that we approve the request for the exception to the Wednesday rule for the RMS Spellbull competition. So moved. Thank you, Joe. Second. Thank you, Jenny. And the vote, Kyle McLaughlin. Yes. Kyle Rensburg. Yes. Jenny. Yes. Joe. Yes. Katie, yes, you guys can go spell. <laughs> Thank you. Motion carries about to zero. Um, consent items. Oh, whoops, I'm on the wrong page. No, I'm not. C. Approval of the minutes. I've already done that. Sorry, I gotta go there. Casey yells at me for using paper. Very good. There's a lot on tonight's agenda. There is a lot. Item five. Approval of out of country trip to. Somewhere Mexico. in Mexico, where, <laughs> kind of, Mexico. Mexico. Uh, for third and fourth year Spanish students from March 14th to March 22nd. I did go through and read that, and it sounds like a really good trip. Um, Mr. Hobbs, do you have any information you would like to share in regards to that? I know our Spanish students prior to COVID used to put trips together and go on them, and Mrs. Hernandez is looking to get that put back together for them. I believe she included the financials that are currently in that account, so there's a little bit there to get started. Um, it would be very similar to what our National Junior Honor Society does in terms of having to fundraise and pay their own way for the trip. Um, this is an immersive trip, so they stay with like a host family. They're speaking the language the entire time, and it should help with their fluency and ability in their, their dialect, and they're able to hear it and then be able to maybe pass that test that we try and get them to get through as Spanish 4 or Spanish 5 students at the high school, so. Any questions for anybody? Just curious, how long is that trip? Is it, uh, yeah, it's over the two weeks of spring break, but it's, I think it's the entire first week and then the second yeah. half of the second week, so it's seven or eight days total. March 14th to March 27th. 
Yeah, and there's 27 or 25, I can't remember which one it is, hours that they're in the actual classroom with the um, Spanish instructors and so. I was looking forward to a lot of parking myself. <laughs> yeah, there's some fun things too. They have to do that. You know, there's a lot of. Okay. Is there any additional credit for this? Um, just the ability to maybe pass that test to get that additional credit, yeah. I think there's nothing that you can do to help kids understand the language more than just kind of dropping them into it and that looks like, you know, where you're going. Yeah. I mean, I can still tell you the first thing I had to learn in German class and a lot of good that did be in the Midwest, but that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, anybody else have any questions or comments about the Spanish trip? If not, I will approve a, a motion to, or I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the out-of-country uh, trip to Mexico for the <coughs> Spanish three and four students in March. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Joe. Kyle McLaughlin, how do you vote? Yes. Kyle Rensburg? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie? Yes. The kids can go on their trip. Motion carries five to zero. Information, the second reading of our policies. Um, policies uh, included in this one are 1213.01, 3213.01, and 4213.01, and bylaw 0142.3. Um, again, this is the second reading, and uh, we have made um, we made a decision to uh, did we not? Or is this it? Yeah, I would, or, if you would. So working with our attorney um, in regards to the dress code policy, it's not necessary to address the policy. Um, we don't have to adopt that as a board, but it needs to be known. And please correct me if I'm wrong. That federal law would still take precedence over policy. So if that uh, were to arise within our district, we would have to follow federal law, but we don't need to adopt it policy-wise. Any questions? Any questions from the community? Do you plan on adopting it? No, not at this time. Okay. Um, again, I just want to make sure I understood. Right. Fed no, we've, we've tabled it. Let's put it that way. And we've tabled it without a date for when we will revisit it. How's that? And um, again, federal law, federal law supersedes school policy. If it becomes an issue, then we deal with it. That sound about right? And hopefully, we'll do what we need to do at that time. All right? Any questions on any of the other policies? The, the policies that are listed, the three of them are all basically the same policy, just different parts of the handbook. Those are to provide guardrails for student-staff relationships. We discussed this um, thoroughly at a policy meeting, and then we've also talked about it at a study session. Um, I know when we went over them line by line, um, I hope was part of that discussion too. I don't think anything has changed with that. We tried to very much honor that we know that we are a small community and we know that the people um, that are our administrators and our staff have children of their own that have friends and so if we go the strictest where you're not even supposed to ever be in the vehicle with another student that's not yours that's we felt going too far. We would remove babysitters from yeah, the Yeah, exactly. It, and nobody wants to police all of that anyway. But we did feel like it was important to provide guardrails for appropriate relationships between students and staff. And um, so if there's anyone that has some questions or concerns about that, and if it happens to be a staff member that does, they can always go through RCTA on the way through. This isn't technically policy yet, but that is what's in here. Um, and then just a bylaw about how to handle vacancies on the school board. There's just a little bit more information on that. So those are the ones that are listed here. Thank you, Jenny. Any questions at this time from anybody? When will the third reading be? We'll be at our um, November board meeting, and uh, which is the 
what, third Monday in November? I have to look at my calendar. Maybe it's the 21st, November 21st. That sounds right. Yes, thanks. It's a Monday of Thanksgiving week. Okay. Katie? Yes. Uh, maybe Jana shared these questions. I sent her an email. I might have sent to you too. We have some questions, clarifications about locker rooms and bathrooms, but I think you've answered all those. So. Can we talk about that all in regards to um, supervision? But right. I think we have addressed all yeah. that. Yeah, and we talked about that at discussions as well. So we appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Are we, is everybody clear here on where we're going? <laughs> okay. Um, Jenny uh, brought up, just to set those guardrails, you know, no matter how many guardrails we set, there will always be a question at some point. We can't police every minute of everybody's day, nor can we set policies that will necessarily necessarily address those. So uh, hopefully this will give more information to folks in, in terms of making good decisions um, regarding staff-student relationships. So we don't need to move on that today since we will be voting on it next month. Um, F, student and stakeholder focus, uh, donations. We had four donations um, in October. Uh, Riddle and Columbia Elementaries received 140 pumpkins from um, the Optimist Club, which was very kind of them. They, they got a beautiful booth set up downtown on 9th Street. If you haven't seen it, it's awesome. Um, I went out there and had a good time and needed a wagon. So uh, it's a good thing. Rochester High School received $100 for student activities in honor of Brendan Rowe, and that is from Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Rochester High School received $88.95 for the vocal music department from monies received at their program. Columbia, Columbia Elementary uh, received school supplies for student needs from the Burton Richland Center Church. Again, we're, we're very grateful for these things. You have no idea how helpful it is to have school supplies on hand for little kids when they come in from a new school and perhaps they've left without taking anything with them and it makes it more comfortable for them coming in. Um, donations for our music and, uh, and a, an, uh, an in honor of uh, donations <coughs> is very thoughtful and who can resist pumpkins? So uh, again, we're very grateful for all those donations. So, um, I would accept a motion to approve the donations as read. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> yes. Kyle McLaughlin yes. says yes. <laughs> Kyle. Okay. Jenny. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Yes. Katie, yes. We have accepted the donations. And moving on <clears throat> to the personnel report that hasn't changed since 3.30, right? Correct. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Personnel report. Columbia Elementary. Danielle Brown. Danielle Brown has been approved as an or, uh, recommended as an instructional assistant at an hourly rate of twelve dollars per hour. Rochester Middle School. Nolan Lehrman as an instructional assistant, hourly rate twelve dollars and fifty nine cents. ASE. Gabriella Megger, instructional assistant, hourly rate of thirteen dollars. Maintenance, Doug Boyer, Director of Maintenance, salary $70,000 a year. Chris Hooks, HVAC Maintenance Specialist, hourly rate $22. Robert Scheidler, promoted to Director <coughs> of Facilities, hourly rate $22. Dustin May, transferred to Head Building Technician at RMS, hourly rate $1,482. Volunteer Coaches, AJ Knotts, Ninth Grade Boys Basketball, Sarah Wilson, wrestling. Did you want to add anything about our new maintenance people? Or? No, once we, once we go through the vote, okay. if, if that passes, then I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce Mr. Bauer and <coughs> talk through some of our plans and, and thank some people. Okay. Um, any questions about the personnel report? Anything from the community? I would entertain a, a motion to approve a personnel report. 
So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Can second. I have a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. And Kyle? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Joe? Yes. Katie? Yes. Personnel report has been approved by a vote of 5 to 0. Mr. Bauer, if you'd like to stand up and share a little bit, I a, a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, as you're getting ready to do that, I would like to share, first of all, thank you to um, Todd, who sat down with me several times, and we talked um, in depth what we were looking for in our maintenance crew, what we needed for longevity, for preventative maintenance, how we could cut costs in that area, how we can continue to keep the district flowing like it needs to flow. I want to thank the board members and community members. They gave me um, some names to work with and reach out to some of these gentlemen and um, bringing them from other businesses and that was a difficult task at times. Um, I'm sincere when I say some of these gentlemen uh, interviewed me and I think that that's important as well and I think that that shows their dedication to our district and making sure that they made the right move both personally and professionally. Um, Doug called last night and we had one last uh, conversation and um, there's no turning back now Doug so if you'd like to stand up and share just a little bit about yourself um, I'm so thankful to have him on board in the hours that he has spent with me touring the district, talking about the district and, and plans and what we want to see done, but also to my administrative team. I know we've had a lot of hurdles trying to pull all of this together and I kept telling them to be patient or to get the right people here and I think that we've finally done that. So I want to thank the board for their support as well. <coughs> my name is Doug Bauer and I've been Actually, I've been in Rochester since 1978. Um, graduated from Rochester. After that, I went to school. I've got an architectural engineering degree um, through ITT. Uh, after that, I ended up going for a job, ended up getting a job at Farrell Corporation in Plymouth. I was there about 20 years. Um, and then I left there and I've been with Rochester Metal Products for about 10 years now. Um, we have my wife, Wendy, and I have two children, Dawson and Samantha, and we also raised our nephew. And then we have one grandbaby with her, or with them. So I look forward to working with the school and working with everybody there. Thank you. Thank you for all the time and energy and conversation you've had since you Congratulations. Thank you. Jason, you might, you might have a new sound boss if you work for it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> That was written into the job description. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's in the bottom. That's in other things is deemed necessary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we have uh, reached the superintendent's business. I'd like to take just a moment first to thank Kathy Adams. She's filling in for Amber while Amber's out, and I know that Kathy has been such a blessing to us over at uh, the administrative office. She takes on a lot of roles willing to learn she's here tonight and I know that she was nervous but she's doing a wonderful job so um, she's leading us through this without any hiccups so I want to thank her for that I want to give a shout out to our city council our county boards um, FEDCO boards uh, in this room this afternoon we housed um, a conversation around uh, whether or not housing is needed in Fulton County what that might look like doing a deep dive into a housing plan and so I just want to commend them for sitting down at a common table, looking at bringing in an organization to really do some research about what Fulton County needs and moving that forward and was honored to host that here in our building. Um, Todd and I got notice we're getting ready to go through the audit process. So we asked for the board's you know, patience. They, um, they sent me a notice too. I was yeah. like, well, what do we have to do? <laughs> yeah, it's board president. So um, we, uh, we um, ask for everybody to the board to uh, principals and directors that does take, it's an, almost another full-time job that goes on within our office. So they will be coming in, we'll be signing those papers, we'll go through that audit process. So again, asking for everybody's patience. There's a lot more with uh, federal grants and everything else that 
um, we've been blessed with, but that's bittersweet because we also have to account for that as well. I want to thank the team for their fall break work. I know we had students in and out of the district the entire time, and we did a lot of really nice activities for the kids. I want to thank them for their time. And I want to thank the board for your continued support pulling this maintenance team together. It's just one more um, example of the board supporting what we're trying to build and to, to um, see come to fruition here at Rochester Schools. And that was a, a lengthy process to get the right people on board and to make sure that we have some longevity. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the administrative team for you to share things that are going well, things that you're working on behind the scenes, anything that uh, the board or I can help you with or support you with. Um, so Oscar will lead with the high school and work our way down to Jason's building. So we have uh, had a, what I feel is a pretty successful intercession compared to what we I went through the last year at the high school with intercession. Uh, I want to thank my staff because I asked them to get their grades in before they left for break so that then I could contact all the kids who actually needed intercession instead of it just being kind of a hot shot of who was coming and going. And uh, we ended up uh, with almost 40 kids who came to help themselves earn that credit that they're going to need to graduate compared to the, you know, the 12 we had at intercessions in the previous year. So that was a huge positive for us. Uh, A.D. Rini hosted the volleyball sectional. Um, and we host the volleyball regional of this upcoming weekend, which is really great for us because the outsiders get to come in and see all the cool stuff we have going on and see our facilities kind of get to show off. Um, the volleyball team was in the sectional finals. Uh, it was a bummer they got defeated there, but it was nice that they represented us until the end. It's a lot easier to host when your team makes it that far um, as well. So he did a great job with that. Um, we've had a lot of success athletically with the football team getting a part of the TRC championship. We have several cross country runners, the entire boys teams at semi-state this um, upcoming Saturday as well. And so that's a huge uh, positive there. Uh, we have PSAT coming up, ACT coming up for our kids, um, which is something that the guidance department's working really hard on in collaboration with uh, Mr. Kissler's department. So that's uh, gonna be an experience. Uh, I know last time I think you guys asked, we are going to let the seniors go on PSAT day um, in the morning so that it is, I mean, we just have to have the staff to be able to put the test on for eight through the junior class all at one time. And that's the easiest way for us to do it without disrupting an entire week. Um, from you guys, just uh, continue to do what you're doing. We appreciate the support and the push to improve the high school on a regular basis. So thank you. When we host those, they see an increase in local business as well. And so not only is it good for Rochester schools, it's good for our community. So thank you all for taking a, taking that extra um, time and task uh, to pull that together. Can ask. I say something out here? I'm sorry. You <coughs> talked about the community a little bit earlier. Um, and I don't mean to interrupt on your time at all because I know Cassie is very anxious to speak to us. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, I appreciated the opportunity to be a part of the um, chili cook-off. We got to uh, freeze ourselves pretty good first thing in the morning, <laughs> but it was just an overall really, really good day. We got to interact with a lot of members of our community, kind of got Rochester's face out there, or the zebra face out there, and people came to our booth because we were Rochester zebras, mm -hmm. I know that. So it was, it was fun and we were all very, very tired, and I forgot my whatever this is called, and that's why, <laughs> this is my wand, actually, my magic wand. That's what uh, Jason brought me, because by the time we got done, we didn't know who owned what. <laughs> so um, it was a good day, we had fun doing it, worked with a nice group of people, and uh, got the job done, but I appreciate the, the, everybody's support um, for that opportunity. Thank you. Cassie? I'm not going to say the outcome would have been different if I was there, but maybe Jana would have had less to do with it and I could have helped her. <laughs> but Everybody knows I am not the best cook in the district. So. But our volleyball team was in the championship. They came up a little short as well, but they were in the championship game um, for their conference as well. Um, since the last time, RMS had a very successful PBIS day for fall, <coughs> something that we had not done before and did a fall festival and let kids kind of roam around and choose where they were going. I was a little nervous about the controlled chaos, but they did a really nice job um, getting to pick what they chose to do during that time. There was face painting, 
There was donuts on a string, there was uh, sack races, hula hooping, cup stacking, all kinds of things. So they enjoyed that last day. We also had a good intercession as well. Um, coming up, we are digging deep into our holiday stuff that's coming up. Our etiquette dinner is a big deal to organize and get going for the community. Hope to see a lot of your faces um, at the etiquette dinner as well. So that's what we have coming up and just continued support from you guys. So thank you. Mr. Bernanke? Yes, I'm with you, Katie. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, things happening, we've got our, um, the math adoption committees from Columbia, Riddle, and RMS met prior to fall break and we're all making good progress in piloting different programs before we narrow it down in January. Um, we had our intercession and fall festival combined with Columbia, that went well, I'll let Mr. Snyder talk a little bit more about that, but we also had our bike safety presentation and thank you to Skeeter for Host Meg did an awesome job. The kids loved it. They all got to leave with a helmet, so that was a good program. Um, we've got parent-teacher conferences going on right now, so that's happening. And then kind of some things happening this week. We've got picture retakes on Thursday and our corporation-wide earthquake drill on Thursday. And then, uh, so hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and we've got academic awards coming up for each grade level, so to celebrate our first nine weeks, that's always a good time. We're going to do it on Halloween because we already figured that day's going to be crazy enough. Let's <laughs> throw some more in there. So, oh, thank you to Mrs. Vance to the board. Just appreciate everything that you do to support us and keep us going. We've got a lot of the same things going on that Riddle's got going on right now, but before we even get started, uh, Wendy, just want to thank you for um, getting all of the stuff that we needed, the supplies for our chili cook-off team. Um, we, there was nothing that we didn't have that, that we needed uh, in terms of supplies and stuff, uh, and, and it was a lot of fun, so I really enjoyed seeing the kids out there and the parents, and I uh, just really good things. Uh, we just finished up um, parent-teacher conferences for first grade. That happened right before break. Uh, this week we've got uh, kindergarten parent-teacher conferences and then pre-K parent-teacher conferences. So a lot of collaboration going on with parents. I really enjoy the parent-teacher conferences because it provides that opportunity to um, sit down face-to-face, -face, talk about how the students doing, um, share a lot of the positives that they're seeing, um, and then if there's any areas that we need to work on, then we can kind of develop plans and stuff, so that's good. Uh, we're also um, in, involved in the uh, Text, textbook adoption with math. Uh, our team's been kind of looking really for a couple of years, um, but really uh, narrowing it down to just a couple of choices right now. Uh, doing sample lessons in class, looking through different materials, communicating with Colum or, uh, Riddle, because uh, Riddle's uh, kind of been doing it for a year longer than we have. Um, so they've got uh, a little bit more information on some of the, the materials. Um, what we've done is uh, Riddle and Columbia have decided to uh, both adopt this year to get back on schedule because several years ago we got off schedule so they were a year behind us uh, we were a year ahead and so now we'll get us back on um, and that'll that'll be good for uh, for for everybody uh, we've also got um, the dyslexia screening going on and I really wanted to mention that because um, a lot of times when parents start to receive letters we're required by the state um, to do these dyslexia screenings starting with our kindergarten kids um, right off the bat and uh, when we send these letters out we are not testing for dyslexia that is not something that we do that is something that a school psychologist or somebody would do all we're doing is screening and communicating to parents if there is any flags that maybe come up in those screens that may need to be looked at further. So I want to just mention that because there's a lot of behind the scenes testing and things going on, screening going on. Um, Jamie Johnson does a fantastic job. We met this morning for about an hour, looked over all the data, looked at all the kids that had flagged, worked on our letters to send to parents to communicate and so on. So I wanted to mention that because um, that's kind of a big thing that um, really only affects a few, few people in the community and in our school but um, is very a very big deal uh, because of uh, uh, it, it kind of helps us to to see where we might be able to help some of these kids out so um, we had zebra zone as well 
uh, which we haven't had for a while because of uh, various um, sicknesses and COVIDs and uh, all that kind of stuff. So we're back to doing that. Kids really enjoyed it. Our staff did a fantastic job. And um, picture day on Thursday, uh, we've got a pre-K field trip coming up. This will be the first pre-K field trip that is off-site. Um, they're pretty excited about that. And, um, Where are they going? They're heading to a, a farm. Uh, it's over by, I think it's over by um, Pioneer area, um, as far as that goes. I can't think of the name of it offhand, but um, it's not this week, it's next week. And uh, it's, a, it's a couple, like just a couple hour trip out there, but um, get, them on a, get them on a farm and, um, you know, let them, let them see a lot of the, the, not just the animals, but the equipment and things that they use out there. And, and we really enjoy doing that with the kids. So, um, and the pre-K kids, you know, they, they don't they don't really get out of the building very much. It's it's crazy taking taking those pre K kids. <laughs> kids out. I, when my daycare starts saying they want to do field trips, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do at that point. But, um, so this is kind of a first for us. But um, I mean, we've done things with the kids, you know, um, outside the building, the pre K kids. But this is a little bit a uh, little bit further. So uh, we're excited about that. And as far as you know, continue to support just like everybody else said. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. We enjoyed the uh, chili cook-off as well and the, just the camaraderie that we had, being able to spend time with everybody outside of the school and outside of a, a board meeting. I thought it was really a, really a good thing. I thought the, the team and just the school is in general represented uh, Rochester very well. And Zebby did a fantastic job. So, Oh, um, Fall Festival and uh, Bike Safe. i got to mention that. We had 85 kids show up for that. And if there's anybody out there that needs a, a, a helmet for their child, um, get a hold of Mr. Bernacki or myself. We have extras, and we'd be happy to give those to anybody in the community for free. Um, those were donated to us um, through the state and uh, through our local um, emergency management. They, they're the ones that, uh, that worked, worked it for us. But we have those, and we'd love to get them to anyone. And then we had 125 kids show up for our fall festival, and that's what the pumpkins were for. Every kid got a pumpkin. They did pumpkin. Uh, painting, we had uh, face painting, we had um, food, um, Luke and I grilled out for, for the kiddos. Um, just all kinds of different stations for them to do, a photo booth, we had Zebby out there, Zebby about went down with the heat condition and it was like 40 degrees out. That, that thing is so hot, and 40 degrees, they didn't really go down, Zebby didn't really go down, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have joked about that, but I mean, it was, they it was, I had to, I don't really talk about wearing the uniform and the, the Zebby costume uh, had to fumigate it a little bit. So. <laughs> uh, but um, it was a real good time, and the kids had a blast, and the weather held off for us. It got really cold later on that, uh, that day. Um, but but they, uh, if you saw any of the pictures, uh, every kid was, was involved in every activity, a lot of smiles. And you know, over break, there's a lot of people that leave Fulton County, leave Rochester. And we do these to provide those opportunities for those kids that have to stay back or that are just back in Rochester, or even maybe they went somewhere, but they have an opportunity. Um, my kids went to both of them and had, had a really good time. And that's what we want to do is be able to provide for some of those kids that, uh, that may not get an opportunity to do something else. And uh, it was very well done. So thanks, Riddle, and all the people that came and helped uh, for that. That's, that was very uh, much appreciated. A lot of volunteers come from the schools, both schools teachers, AIAs showing up to help, and uh, their food service did a great job, too, so. Thank you, Mr. Thank you all. We appreciate all the work you folks do every day in, in your, uh, as administrators. Um, I know that it's a 24-7 job. You're on call all the time, and, uh, uh, and then to have these extra things that you plan over breaks and things like that, it's just greatly appreciated. Uh, as a board member, um, you know, that, that you are willing to give of your own time and talents to get those kinds of things done. And, and it's doing what's best for kids, and we're going to support you every time when you want to do something that's good for kids. So, uh, I mean, I just appreciate all the hard work that goes into those plans and making all that happen for our kids. So, if there's uh, any, uh, anything else from anybody? Anything from the community? And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs> Have a good evening, Kyle. <laughs>
Okay. 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 Okay.